Hello, Sean. Could you take us through some free cash flow? I will, Laurie. And what we have here is actually our equation, our free cash flow from an asset perspective, which we actually take our cash flow from ops, subtract out our change in net working capital, and also we subtract out our uh, gross fixed asset, and that should be a change as well. A little error on my side. Uh, so let's let's start with uh, cash flow from operations, which is actually our vehicle minus taxes. So we need our income statement for that. So that's what's on this board right here. So for EBITDA, what we do is we take our net income, we're going to add back our taxes, so that's 250 plus our interest, so that's 300 plus our depreciation, which is another 300 so we're at 600 now. But our cash flow from ops says, let's take out our taxes again. So that, that 600 we want to take out that taxes of 100 so that puts us back at 500 So I'll put that right in that box there. So that's our cash flow from operations. Now we want to work on our change in networking capital. So we want to take a look at our networking capital from 2010. Let's subtract out our networking capital from 2009. And to do that, we need our balance sheet because we're talking about current assets and also our nibbles, our non-interest bearing liabilities. So let's go over here. Okay, so now we're looking at current assets here. We see that we have current assets of 3,000 in 2010, and our AP, which is our only non-interest bearing liability, is 900. So that's a change of 2100. So I'm going to write that down here. We want to subtract out the year prior. So we go back to our board or balance sheet. We see that we had 3700 minus our AP. That looks like 2200 to me. And that net change is actually, let's see here, negative 100. So now if you look at our, our equation here, we're going to have a minus minus. So we want to be careful after we find our change in gross fixed assets. So I, like I said, gross fixed assets, those are plant property and equipment. And we're using gross because, you know, we don't want to use net because we already added backward depreciation. That's the difference. It's a huge point to make there. So let's go back to our balance sheet. As you can see, we have net fixed assets here. But like I said, we're going to use this top layer. You can see how it connects through. I won't draw the line because my numbers are a little squished. But what we have is 1500 in 2010 and 500 in 2009. So that's a difference of 1000. So we have minus 1000. So actually, if you want to bring this down to our formula, we can actually say 500. Extra zero. Oh, thank you. Lori, he's always checking my math. So we have 500 minus that minus 100. So that's actually going to be a plus. So that's 600 minus 1000 is an, equals a negative 400. So when we look at our free cash flow from an asset perspective, we're actually seeing that we're using up a lot of our, our assets here. So we want to see what our free cash flow from a financing perspective is. And we'll do that in the next video.